Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? It's John the Ninja live in the dojo, a.k.a. the dojo, a.k.a. the John the Ninja Studios. And you know this, man. I got a double tap because this is a special video. This is the last concert in the original concert resume notebook I had. We've gone from ACDC, number one, all the way to this band, number 36. And if you've started this journey with me, you've seen a lot of improvements. You've seen different color techniques, different lighting techniques. And I'm looking better in here. Here I am sounding better on the camera. And that's all thanks to the support of you guys watching and giving me props and subscribing to the channel. So please continue to do so. Keep supporting, help a brother out, like, share, subscribe. So let's get to it. Number 36. And like I said in the last video, this concert legitimately left a lasting impact on my life. And it's really weird. So let's say who it was first. It was Foreigner on the 40th anniversary show with Cheap Trick and Jason Bottoms Led Zeppelin experience. So let's get to it. When I say with 100% honesty, I was having a fucked up day. I mean it. It was a terrible day I was having. So this particular show was the Ben FM Summer Bender. Let me see if I still got the lanyard. Yup. So the Ben FM Summer Bender with Foreigner and Cheek Trip staff, which is pretty nice. This time I got 100% credentials, no fighting, not even trying. And I was excited for this show. I was 100% ready to see Foreigner again. I wanted to see Cheek Trick. I saw Jason Bottom before. I remember seeing him at the MM Barbecue. I've been following along. So I didn't think it would be a bad thing. So it, it was supposed to be a really good day. So... Basically, what happened was me and a bunch of people I've been working with, Andre, I think, oh my God, Natasha was there, even Kristen, oh man, Kristen was there, who else was there? I I'm going to have to remember this, like all the people, I haven't seen these people in a while, but all these people I worked with were there, and we were we were putting down, basically what happened was we had the bb and Pavilion, we didn't have backstage access, but we had the VIP suite, so we were making sure everything was ready, so... We got to the station early in the morning. I think, no, I, I don't believe I stayed overnight there. But I definitely know we got there early. We drove the vans over to Camden. And the whole day was just us preparing, setting up banners, making sure things were ready, you know, moving ice, doing whatever we had to do to make it look like Ben FM owns this place. Enjoy yourself. With that said, I was just not in the mood. It, it started off fine. We were working well. But I started to see a lot of favoritism. And just, I was, to be honest, I was pretty pissed off. Because the, another guy, Andre, I can't hate on him. Wonderful dude. Does a lot for his community. He works for the police department where he lives now. But he's he's a charismatic guy. Me and him are charismatic. But he was more charismatic at the station than I was. I can't be mad at him for that. But I, I always had it in the back of my mind. I remember a conversation I had with one of our bosses. Because, again, if you were aware, I was shooting to get a full-time job there. And I would come and see my boss, Donnie, all the time. He's like, man, listen, listen. We got you. We got you. We got you. And... What ended up happening was Donnie was like, hey, man, listen, I got you set to actually come in, not just work for free. I'm going to get you paid and, you know, you'll learn from me of what I do and, you know, be able to help out. And I was like, cool. So we set up a date. And then one day I got a text from him. It's like a week before I was supposed to start. He's like, hey, I talked to the big boss. He said, you know, th there's a no go with that. I'll, I'll keep you updated. I was like, all right, cool. No problem. So then I wake up the next day. I'm on Facebook. Andre has a job with Ben FM doing the exact job I would be doing and he has a title of assistant promotions director and I'm like okay all right you know so I go in I talk to the big boss and he's like hey man I didn't know you were about that you know you're you're you pretty much I would call it the runaround talk everyone's had it. it's like hey you're very valued here we need you here you do good work and to his credit in the future he would attempt to try and give me work so I can't hate on the big boss, but at the time, you know, that's in your head. You know, I've been busting my ass at Wawa doing overnights and I've been driving to Philly. And at this point, I think I was, yeah. So it was just starting to be the point where I was doing a lot of events by myself. 
if you've listened to a, another uh, video, like I got robbed at Peddler's Village. Somebody robbed the camera, the station camera I was using to take pictures of the event. And I was working by myself and I had a long trudge not only the tent, the table, the stuff by myself to try and get it from the car and this and that. And, you know, I wasn't really at the point, the breaking point, but I was super pissed about it. It was just in my head constantly. So I'm seeing him do all these jobs I know I'm capable of. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm getting jealous. I can't lie to you. I'm getting pissed off. It's, it's weird because now doing what I do, knowing how I am, I, I can't be mad at the decisions that I've made and I can't be mad at management because, you know, the way I was taught, you know, you want to work in this kind of setting, which was an office setting, you know, speak when you're spoken to, you know, be the guy to do everything, but don't go out of your place. And if, if I had the knowledge I have now, I would have been way more vocal. I would have been way more, you know, spectacular as many of my close friends know me to be, you know, because even here I'm doing these concert resumes, I'm reserved, you know, some interviews I'm more reserved. You know, but I'm a funny guy. I like, I like not just the cuss, but I'm a quick dude. I like to make jokes. I like to talk to people. I, you know, I just get a kick out of getting people to smile. So I probably would have been a little bit more energetic that way instead of being so, you know, careful not to step on toes. Because then again, you also got to think for me, having been in certain situations, it, it was a color thing for me too. I had a conversation with one of the girls that she works for uh, iHeartMedia now. And, you know, she was like, oh, I love it here. I was like, I do too. And she's like, yeah, but I got to leave. I was like, why? She's like, you know what? You got to look around here, man. There's not that many of us. They're never going to give me a chance here. I was like, you know what? You you, you do what you got to do. I understand. But for me, I'm kind of stuck. Because that's the station MMR is the Mecca of rock. That's that's my bread and butter. I know my hip hop. Don't, don't try and come at me now. But, you know, at the time, I was just like, you know, I got to try and stick it out. So there's a lot of factors. Again, I'm saying all this out of hindsight. But... Just for case in point, for the time when it happened, while it was happening, I was just, nothing was going right that day. I was, I was pissed that I, you know, was still working as an underling. I was pissed that certain supplies we needed weren't there and we had to go back and things weren't working. It was hot as hell. I was trying to stay positive that day. And one of the things that helped was I was watching Foreigner do their sound check. Like we had a little bit of a break, so I went you know, and, and I sat down and foreigner were doing sound check and I got a little bit of a video, but not much. I was trying not to be, you know, too like, Hey, here I am. I don't want anybody to kick me out or get mad. <laughs> you know, it did that, but I remember the, the, the event was starting. People were starting to come in and I was just, I was, I was done with that day. I was like this day could not get any worse. I just want to stop working and watch the show. And funny enough, I had someone text me. I had someone text me and I was so pissed. I was like, what the hell? Like now this person texts me? So let me put it in perspective. So I'm in Philadelphia one day. I don't know if it was for the Italian festival or another festival, but I'm working at an event and I'm pretty... I can't remember if I'm working with my boy Jesse. Shout out to Jesse, my man. I hope you're well, bro. I can't tell if I'm working with Jesse or I'm working by myself. But if I remember correctly, this is what happened. I was having another bad day. And we're playing some music. I can't remember what song I was playing. But this girl walks by. And she is, like, obviously she just got done a run. She's in the get up, having done cross country. I'm like, okay, she's a runner. So she comes over. She's, like, looking at the sign. And she's listening to the music. And she starts bobbing her head back and forth. And we start strike a conversation. We start chopping it up. And, you know, she tells me her name's Gwen. She's from Pittsburgh, but she's living in Philly. She's a lawyer. And we start talking about, like, all these things. We're talking about, like, basketball. We're talking about religion. We're going back and forth. And I'm just saying, I'm like, damn. I'm, I'm at the point in my life, I'm kind of just like, you know, I'm just in it to date. You know, I just want to date around. I want to have my fun, whatever. Whatever fun that would have been. God only knows there's so many things I have not done. Back to the point. So we're chilling and, you know, she's talking like how she was going to see the killers. And I always wanted to see the killers. Of course, my mind, I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to make something out of this. I'm not going to let this one go. I was like, Mira, so let, let's do this. Let's 
let's exchange numbers. I'll buy the tickets from the killer. So, you know, she had an extra ticket. I'll buy the ticket and then we'll hang out then, you know? And she was like, okay, cool. So we exchanged numbers and I remember I put it down. I was like, Gwen, lawyer, please date. I was like, do not fuck this one up. At least, at least shoot a shot here. So I, oh, damn, how many times did I hit her up after that? So we do the gig. I think I text her like maybe a week out, maybe not. I don't remember, but I do remember I hit her up two times. I hit her up like maybe a week before the show. I was like, hey, we still good? Can I buy the tickets? I didn't hear anything. And then I hit her up again probably the day before of the show and I didn't hear anything. So the day of that killer show, I was doing a gig. I was at Oaks doing the convention center, whatever Benefilm had. Maybe it was like the Lego a thon or something. Maybe, who knows, I've done a lot of stuff at that convention center too at Oaks PA. I've also done a lot of runs. Oh my god, we used to run so many miles. I'm telling you, there's so many trails near Valley Forge. It, the, the, the casino, yes, the Valley Forge Casino, there's a trail. Oh, it's love. I'll explain that in another video. But anyway, so I texted her that day and then she's like, oh hey, you know, I gave it to my roommate. You know, we'll go, but we'll catch up at another time. So I was like, okay, whatever, you know, it, it, no, it's fine, it's fine, moving on. So back to that particular day at the bender, I'm having a fucking bad day, and she texts me out the blue. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, yo, isn't it the Sabbath? Why are you texting me? Like, <laughs> Now, to be fair, it wasn't Saturday, it was Thursday. But I was just like, it was like another, just like another fucking thing just came up. And I was just like, ah. I'm not in the mood. So she was like, hey, you know, because I invited her to it. You know, I can't be mad at that part. You know, it, at least at the time, I was like, you know what? I did invite her. She never responded. She hit me up now. Let me see if there's extra tickets. So I go to my boss. And of course, in my head, I'm like, Lord, let your will be done. Let there be no tickets. I come up. He has a fat stack of them. He's like, oh, yeah, man, here you go. Give them to whoever. And I was like, it's decision time. I'm like, you know what? She hit me back. It's a free concert. If somebody had extra tickets to a show and I was going to go, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want them to withhold it from me. So I was like, you know what, come through. So we're doing, you know, God knows what. And she actually shows up. So there's Gwen. I was like, oh, man, I'm good to see you. And she's like, hey, how are you? I gave her the ticket. I was like, listen, I got to finish up work first. But as soon as we're done, we'll link up and talk and whatever. She's like, cool. So she goes and watches Cheap Trick by herself. And I'm, I forget what happened. But we were doing something backstage with, like, the VIP setting it up. And then finally, I was like, hey, man, are we done for the day? And our boss, Donnie, was like, yeah, we're done. Go ahead and do your thing. Okay, cool. So I dip, and Gwen's watching Cheap Trick. And I'm pretty sure I got the last bit. I think I saw Never Had a Lot to Lose, Surrender, and Good Night. I didn't even remember I saw Surrender. Good for me. So we start talking. It's like, okay, you know, we're getting to know each other, just, you know, two people meeting. So after Cheap Trick, Donnie, my boss, he goes on stage. We missed this. I, I didn't mean to miss this. Maybe it was before Cheap Trick. Either way, he proposes on stage. He proposes to his now wife. And it's like, you know, everyone at Ben FM is having a good time. So me and Gwen, we're just casually walking around. Of course, you know, we go back. We go to the VIP section. We're meeting all these people. We're talking. You know, Donnie is like sky high. He just got a yes on stage. He's telling me how nervous he was, you know. And then we go out. We go out to the nosebleeds. We're out on the lawn for Foreigner. So that's when we really start talking. We start, you know, it's like, so what's it like being a lawyer? You know, what was school like? Blah, blah, blah. We go back and forth. And like Foreigner starts. And the thing that was really cool was we were still talking during Foreigner. I was like, damn, I don't even think I've been paying attention to any of the music. Because, you know, I love Foreigner. That's my band. Especially with my first heartbreak, that was my band. So they come out and they almost have the same set list from when I saw them with Kid Rock. Like they start with the Double Vision and Head Games. Of course, those are my, my jams. And then they go on and do all this other stuff. But... They're, we're talking, and I'm like, damn, this is this is a really good night. We're having a really good conversation out here. So I don't remember if it was urgent prior to or after this particular thing, but I'm going to start with the urgent part. Because when urgent started, I was like, hey, we got to stop talking. This is my jam. So they started playing urgent. I was getting into it, playing the air guitar, blah, 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 whatever. You know, I even recorded it. I recorded parts of that. And it's it's such a crappy recording on my old phone. But that was, that was the song of the night for me. So we stopped talking. But I remember specifically, and I always tell people this uh, prior to this video. I always told people about talking about this concert. I was like, we were under the stars. 
perfect setting, great music, we're really connecting, and I'm sitting there in my head, and I'm like, damn, I could really, I could really marry this girl, and then all of a sudden, like, one switch went off, and the other one went on, it was like, I said that in my head, and then, like, the other part of the head was like, whoa, 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 my brother, my brother, slow down, you don't know her, you don't know her, get to know it, not even, you can see yourself with this girl, but you don't know her like that, don't jump to marriage, so I had that whole conversation in my head, I was like, all right, all right, calm down, calm down, we're just meeting each other, we're just friends, so then after I had that thought, I, I lied to you not, she was like, so the guy I'm dating, I was like, what the fuck is she doing here, oh my god, what the fuck is she doing here, so, in my world, especially at that time, and a little bit now, especially back then, if you had a boyfriend or you were married, eh, I did not want to talk to you. I did. I would be cordial with you. I, we would be friendly. But if like it was like, hey, you know, I got a boyfriend. I was like, yo, we don't need to hang out. I don't need to know who you are. You're wasting my time. Not even wasting my time. Like, you, 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 you why are you here? Go hang out with him. <laughs> Pretty calloused. But even now, like, you know, I'll, I'll talk and I'll hang out with people, but I, I was really, it just kept on happening and happening and happening. It even happened freaking a month ago. I was, damn, damn, now I'm not pissed off all over again. Okay, so side story. So there's a place called Level Up, uh, not too far from where I live, and it was me and my childhood friends. We're all together. So we're in line, and it's a busy night. You know, it's basically think of like an arcade setting with beer. So we're in line, we're chilling, and there's this girl behind me, and she's just, She's by herself. No one talking to her, no nothing. So I, I strike a conversation up with the dude next to me. You know, it turns out his brother plays for Temple. We're having a good time. And the girl behind us, cute, cute little thing right there, home girl. She's in college too. She mentions like, oh yeah, I went there for this and now I'm studying that. So I started talking to her. You know, homie saw that. He's like, okay, oh, I see you, ninja. Go ahead, do your thing. So I started talking to her. She was 25 years old, just about to finish her bachelor's degree. And she was Christian too. So I was like, okay, so you know, I went to school for biblical studies, blah, blah, blah. You know, so what are, you, what are you doing in line by yourself? She's like, oh, I spilled my friend's drinks. I was like, oh, okay. And nobody wanted to stand with me. I was like, no, my boyfriend. As soon as I heard that, I was like, ah. Ladies, ladies, you got to realize. Some of y'all, some of y'all, not all of y'all. I was sitting there. I was like, oh, so that, that boyfriend trash. That boyfriend left his girl by himself. And the dude in me, you know, because you know, I was like, yo, first in twinches, like, screw him, take her, you know. But, you know, the John, you know, the moral, ethical person in me is kind of like, nah, I don't even want to, it's, it's not worth my time anymore. So we kept talking. We were still, you know, the direction changed. I, I made a fast left turn to, I wasn't, I didn't cut conversation, but I was kind of like, damn, everybody got a boyfriend around here. So you get the point. Back to, back to that night. So she said that, I was like, that's that's a bummer. That's a bummer. I'm probably never going to see her again. So <laughs> we kept talking and it, even then it was still it was really good connection. You just meet somebody you know it's like damn, you know this person's really cool. So the show ended, we ended up sitting down like laying on like the grass as like people were clearing out. Like it was really beautiful stars that night. That's one thing I truly do remember. Like I was I was very mesmerized by some of the stars and the constellations. Like, usually I can pick out the Big Dipper. That's as good as it gets. But everything was out that night. Orion's Belt, the Dipper, all of them. And this is stuff I haven't studied since, like, college. So I'm like, damn, this is a really good night. So anyway, we're gigs done. We're all packed up. You know, everyone's left. I have the final van key. So she's like, well, I'm going to take the train back. I was like, man, you know what? You know what? Take the van with me. I'll, I'll drop you off at your house, and then I'll go to the station. So I drove her home, and I just remember she got out. She was like, you should hang out with us again. You know, I was like, well, Mira, if you got something going on, you know, I'll be there. She told me about this party. So in uh, Philly, and of course other major cities for the Jewish community, they have these things called Moisha houses. And what they do is they have these young Jewish adults that are acclimating to city life and, you know, pretty much getting out on their own. They basically live in that apartment i think it's rent free if my memory serves me right but they have to do these i would say not so much parties but these events every month kind of incorporating the jewish religion which is honestly pretty cool i'm not gonna lie to you so she invited me to that i think it was like maybe maybe it was the next day i can't remember but i do remember i had a damn good time i got a hell of a story from that 
So I believe she invited me to that party there. And then when I went there, it was a really good time. I actually like loosened up. I had a couple of drinks, met a lot of people. And the other girl, damn, I know her name. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put her out there. But there was another girl. I got her number there too. And uh, she, I know for a fact she was single, but she never hit me back. That kind of peeved me. But I ended up making a lot of good connections. And that was a fun night. And my buddy Cameron lived, I want to say, 10 minutes away from that location. So, you know, I visited Cameron, went to that party, and then I went to Cameron's again. I even got a picture from that night. I still remember. I looked pretty cool. But back to it. The, the point of the matter is, like, I dropped her off. She got out the car. I was driving back to the station. I was like, you know what? Damn. You know what? That was a really good night. I did a little prayer. I was like, you know what, God? Granted, she got a man, but you know what? I, I think I made a really good friend tonight. And that was really common because I was having a really, really bad day. So I was asking for like a peace of mind. It, somewhere around that day, I was like, God, yo, you got to calm me down. I'm really about to lose my gasket. I'm going to cuss people out. I'm going to start a fight, something. You know, it's that her popping up was kind of like that. Okay, I got you, man. Calm down. Chill. Everything's all right. So now hindsight with everything that's happened this is 2017 it's 2021 now she ended up being one of my best friends and honestly i think it's either her or zach hold the record for most concerts i've gone to with somebody it's either her or zach and i'm talking a lot of shows i probably would not have gone to if she didn't go uh, most notably was probably Firefly 2018 when I saw Eminem. That's a huge milestone for me. But, you know, it's it's weird. It's weird. We had a, we have a really weird friendship, but it's a really fun friendship. And we've had some really, really good times. But all that stemmed from that day. Because after, after that whole thought process, I was like, oh, I'll never see her again. But I got invited to the party, and then I started hanging out. And just it, it spiraled into, a, you know, one of my best friends I have. You know, and I'm very fortunate. I got a lot of, a lot of good friends. A lot of people that hold me down. A lot of people that got my back, defend me when I'm not there, defend me in front of me. And she's one of those friends. I remember we were at a basketball game in Philly. It was probably right before Corona, and I was having a really good time. It was probably it was Sixers versus the Nets. Ah, yes. So Sixers versus Nets, and the Nets are killing it. And you guys know I love my Nets, so you know, you know, I don't have to do much. Philly fans figured out I was a Net fan, so they were like, anytime we did a good play, they would boo me. So I was just like, boo, man, we gonna f you up, boo. I was like, what I do, you know? So, but I remember there was one dunk. I think DeAndre Jordan had a dunk on somebody. So I got up. I was like, oh, oh my gosh. So we stole our seats where we were at that particular moment and there was an old couple next to us and you know the lady tapped her on the shoulder and she she goes to her now it's an older couple you know i'm not i'm not harassing them but you know the fans are booing me i'm the heel i'm the bad guy in wrestling so i'm enjoying the booze yes boo me let me hear it are you not entertained so unbeknownst to me she taps you know going on the shoulder she's like hey listen i know you guys stole your seats if he continues to act like that we're gonna report you so then she turns to her and she says, okay, that's fine, but I have a question. If that was me, would you be saying that? And the old lady just kind of looked at her, turned, and didn't bother us the rest of the night. So something like that, that means a lot. For her to not only see that, but to know what it was, that means a lot. So guys, you never know when you're going to find a friend. You never know how you're going to make a friend, and you never know how that's going to impact you. So uh, the moral of the story, damn. I got to think about that. I would say the moral of the story is be open. Be open. That's it. Because if I would have stuck to my guns about like, oh, she was dating somebody and don't talk to her, even as a friend, I would have lost out on a friend. So be open. That's what I got from that story. But guys, that was concert resume number 36. Let's go through the let's go through the set list. We're going to skip Jason Bottom because I missed him wholeheartedly, but we can say Cheap Trick because I saw a little bit of them. They did Hello There, Big Eyes was number two, Look Out, for Long Time Coming, number five, Ain't That a Shame, Ain't That a Damn Shame, by Fats Domino, great tune. Six, You Got It, Going On, Come On, Cause Backstreet's Got It. Okay, not, no, that's not Backstreet Boys, that's them. Uh, Magical Mystery Tour, which is a Beatles cover, that one is a cover. Eight, I'm Waiting for the Man, uh, The Reverend Underground or something, I don't know. Nine, The Flame, ten, I Want 
Oh, I want you to want me. That's a great song. Number 11, Dream Police. Number 12 is when I came in. I never had a lot to lose. Number 13, Surrender. And then number 14, Good Night. Um, sounds like Hello. Because if you guys played rock band, that was the intro song. Then. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready to rock? That was them. And then Foreigner, of course, enjoyed the hell out of this one. Uh, Double Vision. Uh, head head games. There we go. What is this? I have a note here. I can't read it. Came in after. Okay, maybe we came in after Double Vision started. So we were probably talking, and then Double Vision started, and we ran up into the to the lawn. So Double Vision, Head Games, Cold as Ice. My uh, mom's dog is barking. Anyway, Cold as Ice, number three. Four, Waiting for a Girl Like You, number five. Blue Moon, Blue Monday. Um. They were doing this thing like the crowd would roar, like, hey, what do you want to hear? Okay, we'll play Blue Monday. You know, maybe they didn't even hear us when we said which song they wanted between the options. But number six was Dirty White Boy. Seven feels like the first time. Number eight, Star Rider. Number nine, Urgent. That's my tune, baby. Hey. Uh, ten, Jukebox Hero with a solo. And they play a, a little bit of Led Zeppelin in those solos for that particular one. And then they could do an encore, I Want to Know What Love Is. And they had, I want to say a Camden Crier, choir came out and sang with them. I know there was a choir there. And then Hot-Blooded. Let's see what the note is. We talked with Gwen on the lawn, laid on the grass, already mentioned that. And uh, yeah, did a prayer. It felt great to make a friend. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen. You have gone 36 rounds with John the Ninja. We have completed book one of the concert resume. And book two is now underway. So, ladies and gentlemen, did you go to that show? I will update you with what the next show was. Because we got a lot of great bangers on the way. We got Queen. We got some unknown names. We got, oh my goodness. You know what? I'm not even going to mention some of them, but I do know Portugal the Man is on that list coming up. So, guys, as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you were at that show, any comments, anything, just let a brother know. You know Ninja's here to stay. So, as always, be smart, be mindful, and God bless you. Ninja out. <laughs>
the John the Ninja. Oh, your ears are about to go on a vacation. John the Ninja's got what you need.